let's continue exploring some more common controls in WPF um, and uh, our toolbar in our toolbox so <coughs> Uh, to do this I will actually create a new window so to add a new window I just right click and add and I can add a new window I also have another options when I am adding like uh, for example I, I can add a class I can have a WPF page over here I can add a new item and in, in new item I have several more options of uh, adding some more of more items in my WPF application so this is my WPF related items that I can add in my application so let's uh, add another window and I will call it uh, uh, window or WPF common controls I will also copy this because I will change uh, startup URI and uh, that startup URI is in app.xaml so I will just go and modify this over here Let's save this and I will go back I will just resize this uh, window to make it a bit smaller maybe um, but let's keep it like this so I can uh, actually um, uh, see some more uh, co uh, controls in uh, WPF we have already discussed uh, button label and uh, text box uh, we have some more controls such as check boxes combo box and uh, uh, list box uh, stack panel is m more related to the container we will discuss containers uh, in some other uh, video but uh, I will just discuss some uh, other uh, common controls so let's start with checkbox so checkbox is actually a control that uh, can have uh, several options normally we have let's for example if I want to create a checkboxes for the for the for asking for the skills which means user can check multiple options for example I can ask for the languages C sharp maybe Python like this <coughs> and uh, <coughs> let's add another one so I will just control copy and Control C and Control V. Let's say Java, and to make it more sensible, I will just add a label on the top of these. So this is the label. So I will ask for the skills. Slash languages. <coughs> all right and uh, when we are discussing this uh, checkboxes we can also discuss radio right away so for the radio buttons I can uh, for example I'm I'm asking for like for personal information or maybe uh, kind of a CV something like this so I can maybe ask for a gender so control C control V and I will ask for gender and in this <coughs> I give them two options male and female all right uh, we have some common properties uh, which is uh, you might want to uh, uh, by default check any any of these check boxes so we have this common uh, property we have a release mode we have a content these are the common properties which are actually associated with check boxes and the radio buttons let's say for example I don't want to keep it uh, unchecked by the user so I actually check one of uh, these given options so I selected male so you can change the option 
so let's run this and see how it looks like definitely font size would, would be a bit smaller because I zoomed in to 150 <coughs> percent so this is actually the checkboxes and this is these are actually the radio buttons all right so one common problem that we face with the radio buttons is that one container can have one group of radio buttons let's say for example uh, along this uh, options I'm asking for uh, let's say for example uh, are you available to work with us for the full time or the part time so let's say for example uh, availability and uh, let's copy and paste this one make it here and uh, this is <coughs> full time and uh, let's say part time all right so if i run this all right so these are the check boxes with the skills and uh, for the gender i have male female full time and part time uh, now these all four radio buttons are actually contained in a grid which is actually inside this our window this is the grid and inside this grid we have uh, all these four radio buttons all right so to group uh, uh, the same category of radio buttons I need to put them inside a container. So there are several containers available in WPF, but the simplest one is the grid. So I can take another grid like this, and I will actually move them. Uh, it's asking me to press Alt uh, if I want to move inside this grid. So I will press Alt key. So now they are actually inside the, this grid. All right. Uh, here I also want to. Uh, uh, tell you another very good feature of uh, WPF which is very much related to the designing of the application is document outline and uh, if you don't see document outline over here by default it's not available definitely you can go and search for document outline so this is a document outline window in document outline window is uh, very much similar to the designing application uh, in which we do the graphic designing and where we have layers and we can hide and show the layers and we can see what's inside that layer and so on so you can see that this grid has two radio buttons and uh, I can show this layer I can hide this layer I can move any one any radio button inside this uh, 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 control let's say for example I want to move this inside I will just drag and move it over here so you can see this full times apparently is outside this grid but actually it's inside this grid so if I move this grid around so it's moving like this so uh, so let's uh, bring it back or I just press control Z all right <coughs> so this is my grid and uh, I'm going to uh, rearrange that grid or these items all right so when I resize this grid you see that these items are uh, at fixed place let's say for example mail, mail is uh, is a bit outside so if I actually put it like this because this grid has no borders no background nothing uh, but later on maybe I I want to give it a background color so let's uh, let's say for example I want to give a background color later on so it will look uh, quite awkward so I will just reset this all right so this mail is actually at specific position because uh, I just moved the item so it has uh, some margins so I will actually remove those margins like this. 
so i will just make it either i will make it zero zero i will or i will just remove these margins similarly i will remove these margins with or from this mail so now they are actually at one point so now i can actually move now these are actually arranged according to this grid so i will just uh, move it like this and make it a bit smaller and i will actually place it over here like this <coughs> so let's make it a bit aligned i can use my arrow keys to align them and i can also make another uh, grid and i can move these to inside that grid as well so i will actually drag and drop another grid so i will actually select these and i will move inside this grid somewhere over here and uh, i will resize this grid this and Alright, so let's uh, align a bit. Okay, so let's uh, run this application. And now we have a group of radios like this, and we have another group of radio like this. Uh, availability is not very good, uh, very well aligned. So I will just keep it like this for now. Alright. So how about if I want to access the um, uh, these elements? Oh, one thing is that I can actually access this grid through my C# -sharp program, and I actually uh, I trade through all the items uh, inside that grid, and also I can directly access that uh, from uh, by providing the uh, the ID. Let's say for example, I can give it some id and i can check the property uh, is checked like this so uh, i will uh, first do uh, by providing a name to this grid so let's give it a name grid gender okay so i will go into my c sharp code and after an initialization of components i will actually do for each actually i need to add a snippet by pressing tab twice so this dot grid dot children will give me a list of children and these children are actually radio buttons so uh, that's not a very safe approach because uh, uh, if that uh, that that these children are not actually radio so it will be very difficult for me to handle the situation because it might throw an an exception if i call uh, a method of a radio uh, uh, and and type is not actually radio so so let's so let's console dot this time i will use console dot write line instead of message box <coughs> and I will choose item dot let's say content so the content property will give me the text which is visible to the user so I will run this and I will go and see the output window and if I scroll up you see male and female and similarly I can also uh, s uh, find out the the check property and uh, let's say for example I can say I can have item dot is checked so is, is checked is actually let me see what's happening with is checked is actually a bool of uh, type nullable 
so which means that there is a possibility that uh, it is a null so I will actually need to check specifically with the true <coughs> so is checked so I will write that gender is or user selected user selected female gender or male gender depending upon what is checked all right so let's run this so now user selected male gender because by default it was male so I can also uh, add event handler in if I want to retrieve what user has been checked uh, normally we have a button in the end of a form uh, where we take user input and we say let's say for example save or submit um, so at that time I actually want to retrieve uh, the content of these uh, buttons over there and similar thing will go with the with the, with the other grid as well so I don't need to actually repeat that so we have uh, another grid I will just name it and uh, uh, you can actually access and see what's going on and what's inside this all right so let's move to the next um, component which is the combo box combo box is normally used to uh, to 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 have a long list inside uh, this uh, drop down and uh, normally we use for the city for the country and uh, for these things where we have a longer list so let's call it city so this is the city where you belong so I will actually go and see the common properties of this combo box uh, read only editable editable uh, will actually make it editable and you can actually type in if if something is not in the list so I will actually see this and uh, here is an important uh, uh, property which is items so in WPF uh, <coughs> comma box list box and this view they are very comprehensive uh, in which we have several options to to to, 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 dis to display items it's not just like text mm, we can have complex objects we can also have a radio buttons inside this uh, drop down and so on so i will uh, begin or just start with the very basic which is the list box item so let's say for example uh, i will add a list box item <coughs> like this and I will search for the content property let's say for example uh, the city is Islamabad <coughs> okay oh I press okay so this is, uh, let's add another one this box item or uh, I can also have a combo box item so they are more or less same so this is another list box item I will just go and change the content so this is another city and uh, this is another city so I will I can actually have uh, several options over here with the styling and all this we have a margin we have opacity uh, we can have several colors and so on <coughs> so I will press ok and I will run this so these are the cities and you see that the, uh, there is a difference between the combo box item and the list, list box items so I will actually go and 
directly change it from here so comma box item but that's the benefit of xaml i don't need to go and change it from there and uh, also let's say for example it's uh, is drop down open sometimes you want to give uh, uh, show it as an open drop down you can also do it like this so when by default this drop down will be open when this application will be launched so just like this and uh, if it's editable so let's say for example <coughs> Uh, you have a drop down and uh, you also make it editable which means let's say for example in this drop down we don't have a city shower so I can actually write in or type in and I can move on to the next uh, control and I can always select like this so that's how actually comma box uh, works and the more most important thing was its uh, uh, items uh, property <coughs> similarly we have a list box and we have a list view so let's explore list uh, list box uh, list box is uh, also very much similar to the common box so I will add some more items uh, in uh, this box let's add this box item and uh, the content is let's say for example this time I'm going to select a country let's say for example so let's let's do this from here so we have a list box oops I did not add that I did not press ok actually so let's add Pakistan ok alright so now I will just copy and paste from here rather adding from there from so let's say for example we have another city which is uh, let's say okay so you see we have a list over here <coughs> in a list box so I can select from uh, the given list and I can select from a comma box all right all right now the first another uh, question is that how do we identify which item was selected so I will actually demonstrate uh, by adding a button over here so let's add a button and uh, let's call it btn submit and uh, let's call it submit and I can add an event handler this time I'm going to add it from here I'll just double click over there so btn submit click and definitely I need to give them an object name so that I can access them I can actually do this from document outline as well so you can see this is a combo box these are the combo items over here so I will just right click and I rename this so I can say that combo city and I can say this is a list box which is list box country so uh, and in this event handler I will actually uh, show you that how I can identify which item was uh, selected <coughs> so uh, I can actually access through the object name so the combo city dot selected item so in this case selected item can be an object so object is the highest uh, class in uh, .NET and everything is derived from this object so which means that this combo box can have anything uh, which is possible uh, it can have any class anything available from the dotnet framework or anything that is uh, maybe user defined so I can select an item which is an object 
and I can in this case I can actually directly convert this into a string right so I will just use a message box this time message box dot show <coughs> and similarly I can also do similar thing with the list box so let's do this with the combo so I will select this one and then I will say so in this uh, I am getting the object so the so this is this is the object name and this is the content of this object all right so this is a selected item and I will actually change this to the selected value so this is combo and in this selected value is combo box item uh, and it's telling me that I have actually selected the combo box item and similarly if I do that uh, index I can actually get the uh, index and uh, so on so the combo box item is actually the uh, the items in the combo box is actually the combo box item and it has a property of content so actually I need to convert this into the combo box item and then I retrieve the content so let's let's create an object another object combo box item let's call them the item and I will convert this again I must not directly typecast I need to know that uh, I must be 100% sure that uh, selected item is actually comma box item so it's comma box item and now I can say that item dot content content is object so I need to do two string so I'm sure that content is a string because show method accepts at least uh, a string so it, it does not accept an object so Lahore if I press ok I am getting Lahore right and similarly we can also do with the country so we have this dot <coughs> uh, this box country dot selected item in this we also see that we have another option items there is a possibility that you allow to select multiple options so in this case I will uh, use items and I will have a list uh, over here so I will do the selected item because let's assume I am selecting uh, one item and uh, again in this case uh, uh, that can be an object but in my case it's not an object in my case it's a list box item alright so I can convert this into a list box item and I can directly say that I want content and I can say to string so this is time I'm doing this in just one line so message box dot show and I can say that the country country is this so let's make it in two line so that it's visible to you all right so I'm fetching the selected item and then I'm converting to the list box item and then uh, fetching the content and converting that content into a string so I will see uh, see two message boxes all right <coughs> this one and this one so Islamabad and the country is USA all right also I want to show you one more interesting thing that if I press submit now the program is crashed because uh, there is no selected item over there so object f is not set to an instance of an object because item is actually null so in this case I actually need to see that or need to check that this dot combo city dot uh, so, sorry selected 
uh, index um, that that actually returns negative minus one if the selection is empty so which means that I need to do this if the if the selected index must be greater or equal to zero then I will do all these things otherwise I must not do this all right and similarly with the case of list box so if I press this now it crashes on the list box but you see that this code the control never came into this in, inside this so if I press crachi and I say crachi okay now it's crashing over here and I got I can also have this check similar check I will just copy this <coughs> and I will say or I will check that if list box country dot selected index is greater than or equal to zero then definitely I need to show this box so these are just some checks that we need to perform so Islamabad and countries Pakistan all right set so let's move on to some more common controls uh, uh, we have an image control and image control uh, just uh, to show some image or load some image we can dynamically load some images as well and uh, it, it has a property uh, called source uh, in this case we don't see any source property because in our project we don't have any images so let's first uh, put some images inside this uh, project I can actually easily drag and drop an image so I will just go into my downloads I will find some image maybe so let's look for some images let's say for example this is some kind of a logo uh, already exists do you want to yes replace it so we have a logo over here so I can see this if I go and see the property Right. so this is a logo now uh, let's see some uh, search options so we have a none none means that it will uh, load uh, show the origin size of the images image and uh, this is this will actually fill the the, the dimension of this uh, message uh, image uh, box which is I guess not uh, appropriate uh, because it will uh, it will just uh, squeeze the images stretch the images in uh, uniform it will actually increase the size uh, uniformly whenever I increase it it will increase and another option is uniform to fill so it will actually it will increase uniformly but it will actually fill the size when I increase the size so the so best option I see is a uniform so in this if I reduce the size it will reduce it uniformly all right so let's move on to some uh, another <coughs> control all right so we have a list box we have an uh, image and uh, data grid will be discussed when we will be discussing uh, uh, data driven application fetching some data from the database and so on so uh, two three more things I want to show you one is the calendar and another is date picker so calendar and the date picker so we have a date picker where it is it is so I will actually move it like this over here <coughs> so all right uh, as name states it's calendar and in calendar we have uh, some options over here um, let's see for example inside the calendar we have uh, some option in miscellaneous 
all right so what is a display date uh, do you want to show the year in the beginning maybe you want to ask user to select a decade or uh, you can also start uh, your uh, uh, first day of the week maybe monday and this is a uh, display date uh, that you want to display when this calendar is loaded and display end date display start date and start date and so on let's suppose me let's move it back to month and i want to say that let's for example i am developing an application for the flight booking so in this case i can show today's date and i can show like you can select dates after that so date start is this one all right so you don't see any dates before that and maybe you allow to book some dates for 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 one year right so you can actually have it like this so in this case i can move on and i can actually go and see that i can not move forward and if i move forward i can go to 2021 march until 26 so that's how actually we can set some of the options let's say for example you are asking user to ask to input uh, your date of birth and you are providing a calendar and uh, uh, in this case let's say for example you are uh, showing a decade in decade definitely we will not have that restriction but let's reset from here so reset and reset and uh, instead of displaying the state you might want to do something else but in the decade uh, i want to move it to let's say for example few years back 1993 maybe all right so when user launch this application let's say for example you want as uh, you want to show uh, like few years back to the user so that user don't need to navigate from here and directly select the year let's say for example <coughs> you want to choose your Date of birth. You say that I am from 1995 and I am from June and I am from 22. I can actually directly select from here. All right. Similarly, we have a date picker. Date picker is not like a calendar, but uh, uh, we have uh, normally to pick a date, uh, took a sing sing single date. Uh, because in calendar, we also have an another option where we can actually mark and select the week. uh or the or multiple dates as well <coughs> so uh, we have similar options with uh, uh, date picker another option is that i can actually type in directly let's say for example i am from 1998 maybe so i can actually type in my whole date of birth so let's say uh, this is uh, 12 12 is the day so i will choose let's say one two zero one 1998 so this is 22 january 1998 so i can actually directly type in and I also i want to if i want to select i can actually choose and i can see easily <coughs> all right so let's uh, see some more options over here mm. Mm, calendar see all right so selection mode have a uh, single date range multiple range so let's go and explore multiple range directly single range is you can select single date let's say for example you want to say that you want to take a leave on that specific week so i can actually select that whole week and also i can because i selected multiple selections so i can press a control key and i can actually 
do multiple selection and I can actually do this and I can wait I can do this and I can press the control key and I can select two different weeks like this and I can move on I can move forward and the selection is over there which means that I can actually mark multiple selections so this calendar is quite useful in, in this scenario so that user can see that <coughs> All right. So I guess that's it. So these are some of the common controls, and definitely I can uh, access uh, the selected date because this control gives me a date time uh, structure object. So let's say, for example, let's give it a name. <coughs> and I'll go back in C sharp, mm. right? So this dot calendar dot um, selected date, selected date, selected uh, dates definitely give you a collection of uh, these dates. Selected date will give you a single date time, which is a uh, nullable uh, datetime object and I can dot value right in this case I have datetime uh, uh, object which actually converts from nullable to not nullable object so now I will say to string and now this to string actually have format uh, option let's say month day year select 23 may 26 maybe so we have a wrong format actually so i can search for two string format date time to string format C sharp alright so there are several formats available let's say for example I want just uh, month and day so I can actually use this format there is a long list of these formats actually I can also show you that So if I go back and here are some examples. Here is an explanation. Here are some standards. So in these standards, you can <coughs> choose whichever you want. And you can choose the pattern, and then you can apply those patterns with the date object, and you can do this. So let's let's get month and day. So Ninety-four June fifteen. So I am getting June fifteen. So this is a date format. All right. So let's play around, and uh, I guess that's all from my side.